Welcome to Altium Designer PCB Global Editing. In this module, we will learn about global editing of PCB objects using a combination of Find Similar Object, the PCB, and PCB Inspector panels. Global editing is a multi-step process, starting with selection, followed by using various means for narrowing down the desired group of selected objects. Opening up the PCB, we should open up the PCB filter and the PCB Inspector panels using the PCB tab. Let's reset the PCB Inspector Panel scope to include all objects. There are a few ways to begin the selection process. One you've already seen is using the Find Similar Objects method. Left-clicking on an object, we see it highlighted on the PCB, and its properties now show in the Inspector Panel. When we were looking at the PCB rule creation, we used a combination of Find Similar Object and the PCB Filter Panel to create a query expression for the rules. We will follow a similar approach for global editing. With the reference designator selected, right-click to pull up the menu and click on Find Similar Object. Here in the Find Similar Object window, change to Same for Designator before clicking OK. This will select all of the designators on the PCB. What if we want to narrow it down to those components from the CAN interface schematics that are on the top of the PCB? Click OK on the Find Similar Object window. This opens up the PCB Inspector. We'll switch back to the PCB filter panel for now so that we can do further refinement. Note that for the purpose of our example here, we've put a couple of the components from the CAN interface schematics down on the bottom of the PCB. In the PCB filter panel, we see the query generated from the Find Similar Object action. Now clicking on the Helper button, we can further refine our selection. Click on the end of the query string to insert at this point. Now click on AND to extend our selection criteria. Use the Membership Checks option to populate the right side of the window. Here we can scroll down to find the In Component class. Double-clicking on it adds it to the query that we've been building. Inside the parentheses, start by adding a single quote. This prompts Altium Designer to open up a selection window containing all of the valid component classes. We will pick the CAN interface to narrow down our selection to only those components from the CAN interface schematics. Now we want to add another AND so that we can further refine our selection. Clicking on the Layer Checks function and scroll down to the On Top Silkscreen selection. You'll be tempted to pick Top Layer or On Silkscreen, but these would not work for our purpose. Top Layer is the metal layer and does not have any silkscreen on it while on silkscreen does not narrow our selection to the components on the top of the PCB. Their reference designators use the top silkscreen layer, so we would need to use the on top silkscreen option. Click on the Check Syntax button to ensure we have a valid query. Now we see the updated expression in the PCB filter panel. To verify what this selects, click on the Apply to All, and note that we have selected all of the CAN bus reference designators on the top. Changing the viewing options from Dim to Mask and then to Normal allows us to better see the non-selected components. With those reference designators selected, switch to the PCB Inspector panel for our global edit on this refined group of objects. We could do a number of operations from hiding the reference designators to changing the text height and width. Let's change their size. Click on the text height and enter 40, and now click on the text width 10 mil entry. Notice the instant change to the heights. This is an important concept and one that bears some discussion. So before we continue, the actions performed in the PCB Inspector panel work directly on the design database and bypass rule checking. So be aware that some edits performed in the PCB Inspector can in fact violate PCB rules, as we are working directly on the database and not through the PCB's GUI. Always run DRC checks afterwards. We will be looking at DRC checking in a future module. Going ahead and entering 6 for the width and clicking anywhere on the panel, or the PCB for that matter, we can see the width change as well. As always, we can clear the selection and return to the normal unmasked or undimmed view by clicking on the clear button at the far bottom right of the PCB window. Notice the two components on the bottom layer. They're part of the CAN interface, but were not affected by the global edit due to their placement on the bottom of the PCB. This was reflected in their reference designators having the on-bottom silkscreen property instead of on-top silkscreen. 
This example of globally editing a group of objects, in this case all of the top CAN interface reference designators, illustrates the process of selection, refining of selection, and editing of multiple objects. Using the PCB panel is another way to start the selection process. Opening up the PCB panel, we select components from the pull-down menu. Let's look at locking the Digital I.O.'s PWM connectors. We'll start by clicking on the Digital I.O. component class. Now in the components listing below, click on all the I.O. headers. Either by clicking the top and then holding down the Shift key and clicking on the bottom, or click each one holding down the Control key. We'll do this as this allows for non-sequential selections if necessary, and again, just to illustrate the process. Now we switch to the PCB inspector window and we see the option for locked is not checked. Checking the locked box will in fact set all of these components into a locked state. Now if you try to click on one of these locked components in the PCB, it does not highlight as that is a feature of a locked state. Now if you try to click on one of these locked components in the PCB, it does not highlight. To unlock a component, we'll use the rectangle sweep to select it. You can see that connectors and tracks are selected. To change the focus of the PCB inspector window, click on the Include All Types of Objects setting. This opens up a window where we can limit what is displayed by the PCB inspector panel, and as a consequence, what the panel acts upon. Picking Components and hitting OK, we can now work on the three selected components. Looking at the bottom of the panel tells us we have three of many objects active. Now we can uncheck their locked box. Going back to the PCB, we can now click on and select those components again. This is one of the many ways to locate, select, and then refine the selection using a combination of the PCB, PCB filter, and PCB inspector panels. In the PCB panel's component view, the locked components are indicated by a lock icon. These can also be cleared or set directly from here as well by double-clicking on the designator entry to open up that particular component's property window. Unchecking the locked entry sets the component back to the unlocked state. One other panel that is useful for seeing all of the objects associated with the PCB is the PCB List panel. This panel shows all of the objects in list format, and this list format can be sorted. The list includes non-obvious things like the PCB rules and classes. It also includes nets, as well as what you would expect, components, tracks, etc. Clicking on a column heading will sort the displayed list in alphabetical order. There are a number of settings at the top of the panel. The View Edit button is a simple pop-up menu for switching between just viewing and to allow for editing. The next two options allow for setting the scope of the list starting with the state of objects. There are three that are possible, all, non-masked, and selected. Picking selected objects and selecting some from the PCB shows us the restricted listing. A further refinement of displayed objects can be made under the Include menu. This is much like the PCB inspector display options in that you could select only certain objects to display. We will pick only components and narrow down our selection. Now we see four components listed. If the panel is in edit mode, the various entries can be modified. One example is the rotation of a component. Selecting a component and scrolling over to locate its rotation column, click on the entry and now you can enter a new rotation. And let's set it back to 270 because that's what we need to keep. Having one list with all the objects is useful when trying to find a stray item. The typical situation is with an errant text box containing a space in it placed way off the PCB causing errors. Sorting the location columns by clicking on the head sorts the entries and can point out stray objects based on the reported locations. In addition, if a DRC error points to a location but it's not clear what is there, using the PCB list panel can provide information about objects located at that particular location. Objects may be hidden at a particular location like we saw earlier when we hid the polygons from view, they were still there. The PCB list panel provides for identifying the errant object, allowing us to select that object in the PCB list, which highlights it. Now we can select and delete it if necessary.